Hi, welcome to part 2 of lecture 12 EC141 and we are still talking about linear block codes. So uh, in this part of the lecture, I'll be introducing to you or showing you some examples of linear block codes. Some may be familiar to you if you use your computer a lot. Maybe it is familiar to you if, you're, uh, if you play a lot of games or tweak with a lot of settings, if you try to hack maybe uh, you'll be familiar with some of this okay so just a review from the previous part uh, the main takeaway here is we when using linear block codes you have uh, minimum Hamming distance and if we increase that you increase the reliability of your code okay so the first example of a linear block code is the repetition code. So what it does is that you have a chunk of data, you just transmit it over and over and over and over again for n times. Okay? Just it it's a brute force way of making sure you want to transmit something. Right? It's the same in human communication actually. If you want to uh, have a message transmitted if you want to uh, convey there you go the better word if you want to convey a message you have to repeat it over and over again to make sure that the person you are talking to gets it okay so maybe if I repeat this lecture many times uh, you will be able to get it after repeating it maybe some number of times n times maybe a thousand times no I'm kidding okay that's why there's a video lecture Okay, that's why there's a video lecture, so you can listen to the same lecture over and over again. So basically, if you repeat the same lecture, you're doing the repetition code for you to be able to uh, get the message that I am conveying. Kidding, of course. I, I, I hope you only need to, to uh, watch this once so you, uh, before you will be able to get it. Okay. So that's the repetition code. Repeat the transmission over and over again for n times. So uh, this results into a highly reliable communication system. As you can see, if we have if we transmit a bit zero right here, then we repeat zero n times, right, and the weight of that code is zero. If we uh, transmit one, we transmit one n times. That's the code word, and the weight of that code is zero. As you can see, the minimum Hamming distance of this code is equal to n. But what is the expense? Okay, uh, the expense is actually the uh, data rate. Right? So if you're using too much data, you're using too much, a uh, lot of number of bits, just to be able to have a highly reliable code. Okay. So the dual of that, okay, we'll get to this in a moment. The dual of the repetition code is the even parity or odd parity check. So the even parity check is achieved if all the code words that have an even weight, okay, otherwise it's an odd parity. So a valid code word, as a valid set of code words, code words where all your code words have an even even weight, okay, it's an even parity check. Otherwise, it's odd. So how do you create an e even parity or odd parity check? So the genera generator matrix of that is equal to this, where your P here is a K by 1 matrix with basically all 1s. Okay, it's a K by 1 matrix with all 1s. This results in your uh, parity matrix adding everything. Okay, so you add all the bits from your message and then uh, the result will be added as a parity check. So you only use one bit okay, for your parity check. So what is the result of that? The result is a code that is not that reliable. Right? A code that is not that reliable, but uh, it's something, all right? But at least the data rate is not that compromised. As you can see here, you're uh, out of four bits, you're only using one bit for parity and that's a code rate of three-fourths the transmission rate 
So as opposed to your repetition code, which is a waste of data rate, your uh, parity check sacrifices, your even parity check sacrifices uh, reliability by uh, sacrifices reliability by uh, being thrifty in transmission. Okay, so as you can see from this set of code words, you have eight. Uh, you have three bits with eight symbols. You have uh, your odd parity check. Sorry, even parity check matrix. The minimum distance is always equal to two. So it's actually regardless of the message length. So regardless of the message length, your minimum distance will always be 2, even if you increase the message length. Right. With even parity and odd parity, there's a guaranteed error detection, but not a guaranteed error correction code. Right. There's always a guaranteed error detection. Right. Another, uh, first, the first code, systematic code that is formally introduced is the Hamming code. So the Hamming code has is an NK code where N and K is related to some integer M, as you can see here. Okay. So if your message length is greater than or equal to three, sorry, not message length, if your M is greater than or equal to three, your not not the message length, so I apologize for that. But so if your integer M, which is a parameter, is greater than or equal to 3, your parity check matrix H contains all the possible binary vectors of length M except 0, 0, 0. For example, your 7 for Hamming code, if you check the parity check matrix right here, so this is your uh, identity matrix and your uh, parity generator matrix, okay, transpose, there you go, parity gener generator matrix transpose, as you can see, uh, the columns of H correspond to all possible binary vectors of length 3. So that is 0, 0, 001, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1. Okay. So you'll be able to uh, create a Hamming code by creating your parity check matrix. So maybe if M is equal to 4, which corresponds to uh, K equal to 11 and N equals to 15, you create a 15, 11 Hamming code. Okay. That's, a, that's a large matrix, but uh, you can easily create that, the generator matrix, and the, rather the parity check matrix by uh, looking at the, all the possible combinations of vectors of length 4. Okay. So that's your Hamming code, and the code rate is equal to this. If you uh, let the parameter, the integer parameter, approach infinity, your our, your data rate is, will approach your transmission rate. Okay. That means using a Hamming code, you have a minimal data rate lost because as m becomes larger. So if you use a large uh, parameter m which means that your code is essentially large okay you create uh, your your code rate your data rate is approximately equal to the transmission rate okay and regardless of how large your m is the minimum distance will always be equal to 3 so this is an improvement over your even parity with minimum distance always equal to 2, which only guarantees error detection. Hamming code with a minimum distance of 3 guarantees a 1-bit error correction. We'll get to this. We'll get to more detail on this in the next part of the lecture. Okay. So, however, if you have a minimum Hamming distance of 3, you're guaranteed 1-bit error correction. And that's your Hamming code. All right. The maximum length code is the dual of a Hamming code. Okay. This is your generator matrix for the maximum length code, which is actually the parity check matrix of your Hamming code. Okay. So the generator matrix of a maximum length code is equal to the parity check matrix of a Hamming code which makes them duals of each other. That's what 
I mean when I say dual codes. The dual of a maximum length code is a Hamming code. Its parity check matrix is equal to the generator matrix of the other. Okay, so this is the maximum length code, and it's also dependent on the parameter m from the Hamming code. Okay, so some example, your 73 code, which is a, a dual of your 74 Hamming code. So they are duals of each other. And this is the list of all possible valid code words if you have k is equal to 3. Okay. So except for the zero code words, your zero code word, the minimum Hamming distance is equal to 4. And this guarantees a one, still a 1-bit error correction. So just a property of your maximum length code, uh, your bit, your data rate is equal to this, which is less than the data rate of your, so, sorry. There you go. So the data rate of your uh, maximum length code is less than the data rate of your Hamming code. Okay. And as m approaches infinity, well, the data rate approaches zero. Okay. So, the trade-off with this, even if you have a less uh, data rate, your code is more reliable, having, more, having a larger minimum distance compared to your Hamming code. Okay. Larger minimum distance, better reliability. And it seems that there's a trade-off between the, the minimum distance and the data rate. If you want to have a more reliable code, you need to sacrifice some data rate. Okay. But uh, if, you, if you're limited to some spectral efficiency, then you might want to consider using a uh, code that is not that reliable, but reliable enough. Okay. So basically, there's a trade-off. Always, when, I when there's an engineering problem, there will always be trade-offs. So another type of code is the Reed Mueller code. So take take note of Reed. Oh sorry, Reed is actually a pioneer or a key figure in coding theory. The Reed Mueller code is uh, a length of code words n equals to two raised to some parameter m, okay? and we call it an order. So the order r, which is should be less than the parameter m. The message length is the sum of uh, all integers. Uh, sorry, the message length k rather is equal to this expression. The sum of your uh, parameter m com uh, combination. Sorry, combination uh, zero plus m combination one, and so on until you get to the order m combination r. With this setup, you actually achieve a minimum distance that is dependent on the order and the parameter m. Okay, so the Reed Muller code is designed to have a simple decoding algorithm with flexible patterns. And how do you create the Reed Muller code? The Reed Muller code can be generated from this relationship right here. The rth order, read Mueller code, has a generator matrix with r rows. Okay. Sorry. The rth order, read Mueller code, has a gener mat generator matrix defined by this uh, column vector of length r. Okay. And each of the elements of this column vector is a matrix in and of itself. So we start with G0, where G0 is some 1 by n matrix whose elements are all 1. Okay. Your G1 is an m by n matrix whose columns are distinct binary sequences of length m put in natural order. Okay. So that is an example would be this. So you start with zeros an all zero column then with zero to zero zero one and then so on until you get an all one column right here 
Okay? So, that would mean that if we the uh, order is equal to 1, then the generator matrix is equal to your uh, first column would be all 1s. There you go. Okay. And your second to uh, nth column is equal to whatever this is. So you just put it there. And this is your uh, first order read Mueller code. Okay, so it gets complicated, yes. So to generate the other matrices, your G2 is a bigger matrix whose rows are bitwise multiplication of any two rows from G1. And you take all of that, create a uh, matrix, you get G2. And for row GI, it gets more complicated. All right. So an example is the first order, 8 for Muller, read Muller, code, and the generator matrix is equal to, sorry, equal to this. So just to note that the read Muller code is not a systematic code. As you can see, you cannot form a pattern where you get uh, your identity matrix and uh, some parity generator. All right. So don't need to worry about that. It's just an example. So to summarize all the examples of codes, as you can see here, there's a trade-off actually between the reliability of the code and the code rate. Basically, what I want to what I want you to learn about knowing more examples about linear block codes is that if you have a greater minimum distance, you get better reliability as we have said before, but you sacrifice some code rate or you sacrifice your bit rate or data rate for that matter okay so it's kind of like using more bits to check if there is an error rather than transmitting the bits with actual data at all so if you really want to make sure you have a reliable communication system then you just transmit it over and over again like the repetition code you're making sure that the receiver actually receives it at the expense of using the same bandwidth to transmit it over and over again all right so that's the end of this lecture if you have any questions uh, do not hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section below thank you for listening see you next meeting